The Argentine motorsport scene is deeply rooted in tradition and boasts internationally recognized names. Its primary category, the Turismo Carretera, is also the oldest active touring car championship, dating back to the pre-World War II era. Throughout its history, the TC has maintained some of its traditions while simultaneously showcasing innovation. It has produced notable figures like Agustin Canapino and Jose Maria Lopez and features cars such as the Torino, a model that has been out of commercial production for decades. Balancing history and innovation, the TC entered the 21st century stronger than ever. The Turismo Carretera, or simply TC, is a touring car championship based in Argentina. Established in 1937 as the Campeonato Argentino de Velocidade, it adopted its current name in 1939. The name combines the nature of the cars used with the type of tracks where races originally took place. The races on roads and dirt tracks continued until 1990, when safety concerns prompted the organization to switch to racing exclusively within racetracks. Initially, teams used only touring car models until the 1960s, when some started experimenting with prototypes. Over time, the regulations gradually shaped the participants on the grid, with only four manufacturers establishing themselves as car suppliers. Similar to many categories worldwide, TC cars resemble street vehicles only on the exterior, concealing tubular structures and 3.1-liter inline-six engines capable of generating approximately 450 to 470 bhp. Race weekends consist of two free practices, qualifying sessions, three series, and the main race. On Saturday's qualifying, drivers typically qualify based on their best lap times, like in any other category. On Sundays, three races, or series, of five laps each are contested according to the qualifying results, dividing the grid into three. The results of these series determine the starting grid for the main race. The calendar includes some events labeled as special races, differing from others in rule changes or final awards. Regarding points, all participants in the races score, but since 2008, TC has employed a system similar to NASCAR. Points are awarded normally for most of the season, but in the last five races, the Copa de Oro Gold Cup is contested. The top 12 drivers until the last race before the playoff qualify for the competition, which begins with zero points for everyone except the leader, who starts with a 15-point bonus. Winners of the final races in playoff earn an additional eight bonus points per new victory, and before the last race, the top three non-qualified drivers from the regular season get a chance to compete for the title. As expected, the competition has fostered rivalries between brands that have lasted for decades. Although TC had multiple manufacturers at its inception, by 1981, the grid was restricted to Ford, Chevrolet, Dodge, and IKA. This situation only changed in 2022 with the entry of Toyota. Concerning drivers, the most successful ones include Juan Galvez with nine titles, Guillermo Ortelli with seven, Juan Maria Traverso with six, Juan's brother Oscar with five, and tied with four titles each, Dante Emiliozzi, Hector Luis Gradasi, and Agustin Canapino. Argentine motorsport has significantly ancient roots, with the first GP de Carretera organized in 1910. In the following years, various locations hosted this and other races until the creation of the Argentine Speed Championship in 1937. To win the title at the end of the calendar, the driver was required to have won one of the races during the year, even if they had more points than others. Besides the driver, the cars also featured the figure of the navigator or co-driver, which remained in use until the mid-2000s when its presence was banned. In the first edition, Eduardo Pedrazzini won aboard a Ford V8, becoming the first champion of the competition. In 1939, Angel Lovalvo was crowned champion, becoming the first winner after the name changed to Turismo Carretera. In the following decade, the category was heavily impacted by the industrial crisis caused by World War II, at least until 1946. During this time, a name emerged that would make history both on TC tracks and worldwide. Juan Manuel Fangio won the titles in 1940 and 1941 with Chevrolet, breaking Ford's hegemony and becoming the first two-time champion of the competition. The TC was not contested in the following years. The flow of parts importation resumed in 1947 when the category returned to racing. With Fangio's move to Europe, it was Oscar Alfredo Galvez's turn to shine, winning in 1947 and 1948. His brother Juan continued the success and was champion in the following years, becoming the biggest name in the category. Except for 1959, the Galvez brothers were absolute champions until 1961, always with Ford. The Galvez hegemony ended with the arrival of Dante Emiliozzi, who became a four-time champion. 
Over the years, Ford lost ground to Chevrolet, which gained prominence and became more competitive. Dodge watched the fight closely, and in 1964, it achieved its first victory in the category with Marco Ciani. During this time, coupe cars gave way to more modern cars manufactured in Argentina, and IKA entered the fray with the classic Torino. Like the cars, the category rules also evolved during this period, and changes were made to allow modifications to the models used. A series of prototypes emerged throughout the grid, always based on cars from manufacturers such as the Hair Mark II, Stephen Ford, Liebre Torino, and Trueno Naranja. IKA dominated the category with its Liebres, and in 1970, the TC was divided into Formula A and Formula B. The two subcategories differed in tracks. While one continued racing only on roads, Formula B began racing exclusively on racetracks. Manufacturers also began providing official support to some teams, turning some garage competitors into factory teams. On the grid, the main models competing were the Chevrolet Chevy, Dodge Polara, Ford Falcon, and IKA still with the Torino. Amid several titles for Hector Gradasi, the category saw the arrival of Juan Maria Traverso, a driver who would become a six-time champion in the 1990s. Returning to 1973, the TC lost Nassif Estefano in an accident in Imogasta. Despite the tragedy, Nassif was crowned champion at the end of the competition due to the wide advantage built by the driver. In 1976, another great driver in the category made his debut. Roberto Muras debuted for Chevrolet, but it was with Dodge that the driver became a three-time champion in the 1980s. At the end of the decade, the conflict between ACA and KDAD intensified, affecting the TC calendar. After some date adjustments, the 1979 season was only finished in 1980. During the second semester, the following season began, and several drivers changed teams, significantly altering the grid. Names like Francisco Espinosa, Roberto Moras, and Antonio Aventin shone in the races, but safety remained a weak point for the competition. The situation was so absurd that during the Vuelta de Veinte y Cinco de Mayo, Antonio Lizovic and Victor Galindez ended up abandoning. The two walked alongside the track to the paddock, but on the way, Martial Feijou's car hit both drivers, who died instantly. In 1984, Octavio Suarez also lost his life in an accident. In addition to driving, Suarez also presided over the TC organization, and because of that, he was replaced by Juan Carlos D'Ambrosi. The 1980s were practically dominated by Dodge. The brand achieved victories with Aventin, Muras, Oscar Angeletti, and Oscar Castellano. Only in 1982 and 1989 was the factory defeated, in both cases, by Ford. In 1989, the compression ratio of Ford and Chevrolet engines was increased, creating a grid polarization between the two brands. The situation was aggravated due to the age of Dodge cars, which were problematic to maintain because they were old. Due to the problem, several drivers left the brand to race for one of its rivals. That year, Angeletti was the runner-up with a Ford Fairlane, showing that the car still had a lot of potential. Because of this, ACTC prohibited the use of the model, fearing it would create a monopoly. Years later, in 1992, the competition lost Roberto Muras in an accident in Lobos. Both the driver and the navigator died. In 1994, Guillermo Javier Ortelli and Omar Martinez debuted in the category at the Two Hours of Buenos Aires. During their careers, both created a rivalry and became champions of the category. That year, TC also lost Osvaldo Moresi in an accident at the Gran Premio de la Plata. The loss resonated among the public, teams, and drivers, resulting in the prohibition of road races. Overall, Ford maintained the polarity with Chevrolet, and Jean-Maria Traverso won four of his six titles at the end of the decade. The dominance of Ford and Chevrolet gradually alienated fans of the other two brands. The problem with maintaining old cars persisted, but teams solved part of the problems by adapting Cherokee engines from Jeep for models from both manufacturers. In the following years, all cars underwent renovations to modernize the category. Ortelli and Martinez kept the rivalry alive, with the former becoming a four-time champion during the decade and the latter only winning once. Dodge cars became competitive again thanks to changes, with Ernesto Besson being champion in 2003 and Norberto Fontana in 2006. In 2007, Guillermo Castellanos' death was crucial for the removal of the Navigator figure in cars, a tradition that had been in place since the creation of the TC. In the following year, the playoff system was established, giving the competition its current logic for defining champions. During this time, three debutante drivers deserve mention. In 2008, Jose Maria Lopez debuted for the HAZ racing team. The driver quickly demonstrated his skill on the tracks and soon left the country to compete in Europe. Racing and touring and endurance, Lopez became champion at Le Mans, in the WEC and in the WTCC. 
In 2009, Agustin Canapino debuted. The son of a TC car preparer, the driver became champion in the very next year in 2010, as well as in 2017, 2018, and 2019. In 2023, Canapino debuted in the IndyCar series for the Junkos Hollinger team. The last one was Guido Falaschi. With the nickname El Principe, the driver had been the champion of the Formula Renault Argentina and vice champion of the TC Pista, which is a lower division of the TC. Unfortunately, Falaschi passed away on November 13, 2011, as a result of an accident during a race. The 2010 championship was one of the most fiercely contested in the history of the competition. Mariano Werner and Agustin Canapino consistently performed well throughout the entire playoff, but both drivers lacked the mandatory victory. The title was only decided in the last race, with Canapino emerging victorious. In the following year, Gabriel Ponce de Leon was disqualified from one of the races due to irregularities in his car. This discovery raised suspicions about 2009, a year that Ponce de Leon's team had won. Following the scandal, the Lincoln Sport team withdrew from the TC. In the last decade, Chevrolet demonstrated dominance largely due to Canapino's performance. With seven titles, the manufacturer was only challenged by Ford, which secured three victories. After two titles by Mariano Werner for Ford, Jose Manuel Urchera clinched his first title aboard a Torino Cherokee in 2022. That marked the first Torino title since 1971 with Ruben Luis de Palma. Currently, the calendar comprises 15 stages, and in 2024, the grid will feature the Chevrolet Camaro, Ford Mustang, Dodge Challenger, and the new generation of Torino in addition of the Camry models. If you enjoyed the video and want more information about Formula One, IndyCar, and others, subscribe to the channel. Questions, suggestions, or tips are always welcome. Leave them in the comments below. Until next time!